Hey everyone, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who subscribed to the channel. I got an abnormal amount of new subs recently. I certainly didn't expect any of that. It's been absolutely epic, so thank you. So a lot of you asked in the comments for some sort of uh, commentary in the videos, so I thought I'd give it a try. If you have any feedback, let me know in the comments under the video. Or if you don't have any feedback and uh, if you just like this format in general, let me know too. Because, I don't know, I'm just trying different things out. I don't really have like a clear picture of uh, what this channel is gonna become. So any feedback that you have is absolutely welcome. A lot of people have also asked for tutorials. And the thing is, I already mentioned it in comments and uh, on my Discord, but everything that I do for for this channel is just a small hobby of mine. I'm doing it just for fun. And the thing is, tutorials take much more time to produce uh, than time lapses. Because, you know, you need to have like a unique idea for the video that's not been covered already for like 20 times before. And you need to do some preparation, you need to ideally uh, have a script for it, so that it's not like super boring to watch, you know. Sometimes, depending on the topic, it could require some additional research, because, you know, I don't know everything. If I were to produce, like for example, a dedicated video on how to produce like a clean topology or whatever. I'd have to make sure that I know how to do that myself to be sure that I'm not teaching people uh, something that is just wrong, you know? Tutorials for beginners are much easier to produce, but the thing is, there are already tons of tutorials for beginners. Like, all it takes it to just do a quick search and you're learning Blender. And not only tutorials take more time to produce, they are also, if you think about it, it's a completely different type of content from uh, what I'm doing right now. Because I'm making uh, finished renders, finished scenes, right? Or like objects or whatever. And uh, the whole process is just uh, repeating same actions over and over again, right? For the most part, it's just routine and uh, some decision-making every now and then. Most of the time, you're just playing with proportions, trying to come up with uh, nice colors and stuff like that. But for tutorials, you don't even need to make any scenes or complex objects. I could show you all of the tools that I'm using on just simple cubes. Uh, what I want to try to do instead is to maybe try to motivate people by showing them what's possible in Blender or Substance or whatever and let them take it from there. Because all of the information is already there. All of the explanations on how to use tools, all of the techniques, all of the workflows, etc. All it takes is to just invest your time into learning those things. Anyone can learn that. Uh, what I can give you though, I can maybe try to give you some general tips to guide you while we're watching time lapses together. You know, just general explanation of how I did this or that. This sort of thing doesn't really take that much time. And it's just something that I can realistically do. I don't know if I'll be able to talk through through the entirety of uh, the time-lapse, but I guess we'll see how that goes. The thing with uh, time-lapses, by the way, you know, speaking of the whole time-lapses versus tutorials thing, is that I'm just doing it for fun. I just really enjoy modeling and, uh, you know, creating stuff in general. That's just what I do in my spare time because it's uh, interesting to me. And if uh, YouTube didn't exist or like Twitch didn't exist, I would still do it. And I thought if I'm doing it, I might as well upload it to YouTube because other people may find it interesting, you know? 
Oh yeah, and another thing that I wanted to mention, that is kind of related to all of that, is that this channel is not really a Blender channel. I'm gonna be using any tool that gets the job done. You know, in the last two videos I'm also using Substance, for example, because it seems to be the best tool for texturing. And if I want, for example, to add interactivity to the scenes in the future, there may also be Unity, for example, in the videos. So yeah, it's not about Blender or Blender tools. We're gonna use whatever we need to. It's just that Blender, in my opinion, is the best software out there for modeling and rendering. Well, at least for me. I'm not compromising on anything with Blender. If Blender, for example, cost the same as Maya, I would pay the price of Maya for Blender. It's that good, in my opinion. I'm really grateful to all of the corporations and individuals who support uh, the Blender Fund. You guys are doing an incredible job and uh, the rate of improvement is just absolutely stunning. And I've tried different software. I've been using 3ds Max for a long period of time. I've tried Maya, I've tried uh, Rhino and uh, other software that I don't even remember anymore. And uh, I want to point out that I'm not saying that Blender is like better than anything out there for everyone. I heard that Blender, for example, is not the best at handling huge numbers of faces. Like if you have millions of them. Uh, well, at least in the current version, that is 293. I'm just saying that it's uh, the best for me for things that I am personally doing. And that is why Blender content. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry that I've been ignoring the time lapse so far. It's just that it's the first video with a commentary ever, and uh, I needed to get some stuff out of the way. You know, a lot of people have been asking about uh, tutorials and stuff like that, so yeah. Now I can just tell them to watch this particular video, um, and basically it has all of the answers. Uh, in the next one I'll talk more about what I'm actually doing in the video, of course. Oh, just one more thing that I wanted to mention is that I just uploaded two of my models to Sketchfab today. And I wanted to hear what you guys think about it. Because uh, it takes some time to prepare models for Sketchfab. And for me, I personally like looking at models uh, at Sketchfab. I like looking at how UVs are done, I like looking at wires. All of that stuff is very inspirational to me. But yeah, I wanted to hear from you. If you guys think that I should upload my models to Sketchfab, let me know and uh, I will. Uh, let me know in the comments under this video. All of the links are in the description, by the way. Uh, this particular scene that I'm making in the time-lapse was inspired by a game called The Movies that I enjoyed playing back in the day. I started making it by just sketching out some basic shapes with uh, primitives, just to get a feel for how everything is going to be positioned, and uh, what the composition is gonna look like in general, stuff like that. Because I don't have any 2D sketches for the stuff that I make, I just have some references and that's it. I prefer to sketch in 3D, because I'm not really that good at drawing. I also try to not spend too much time on any particular object, and instead I'm trying to focus on the scene as a whole. This is more of a personal preference, if you know how much detail uh, you want in any particular object up front, you can definitely just finish one object and then go to another one. The only thing that you need to pay attention here is that all of your objects have uh, roughly the same level of detail. And I mentioned it on my Discord already. It's easy to get caught up in modeling and put in more details that you can actually see in the final render. I usually try to make things as quickly as I can because, in my opinion, life is too short to spend weeks or months on just one render. It depends on what exactly you're doing, of course, but I guess that's like part of the reason, actually, of why I'm sticking to this low-poly, stylized look. It's definitely not the only reason. I really like cute-looking stuff, 
but the time that it takes to make anything is definitely a consideration for me. Uh, this particular work took two streams to finish. The video that we're watching right now is sped up eight times. I had to cut out a lot from the substance part of the time lapse because, to be honest, I'm really new to substance and uh, it's taken me a lot of time to do simple things, but with time I'll get better at it. A lot of people are asking what add-ons I'm using. I'm using a quick menu add-on that I made for my personal use. I had to learn some Python and Blender API to make it. For the most part, what it does is it moves useful Blender functions in one menu. In a way, it's like quick favorites in Blender, but it has uh, submenus, and it was designed to be used with uh, accelerator keys. It also has some operators that are not in Blender that I found necessary to make. It's on my Discord in the QM channel. You can download it and play with it, but keep in mind that I made it for myself, and by no means it is intended to be user-friendly or easy to understand or even stable for that matter. Use it at your own risk. I actually encourage people to learn programming, to get more efficient at whatever it is that they are doing. And uh, it's kind of an unpopular opinion. You know, the whole is programming the new literacy debate. But the fact is that you're at mercy of uh, people who make tools. And in smaller communities, in smaller fields, you have uh, less of a choice. You know, there is only so many add-ons that I made. And uh, only you know what tools you need. Only you know your workflow. Only you know how exactly things have to work in your particular case, you know? If you learn programming, you'll benefit from it in basically anything, if you're using computer for your work. But I am a programmer, so take it as you will. It's just my opinion. I would love to make tools that a community can use, tools that are stable enough and mature enough. But as you can imagine, it's a completely different time investment. For those, you have to make it clear what operators do, how you can use them. You need to test it, you need to support it, you need to fix all of the bugs in all of the different workflows and all of the different cases that people can possibly encounter. And it doesn't matter if it's free or not. People will ask you to fix things, you know? So it's quite a commitment. I'm just doing what I can with the time that I have. As I already mentioned, all of this is just for fun. As you can see, I'm making an environment here that is walkable. Even though it's stylized and uh, not all of the proportions are exactly realistic, I think if you make environments uh, that people can imagine being in, if they can imagine interacting with stuff, it will look much more immersive. That's why I'm going for walkable environment instead of just making symbols of things. But that's just what I personally uh, like making. Obviously there is place for all sorts of arts and it's highly dependent on what the thing is for. For the unwrapping I'm using an operator, a custom operator that basically marks all of the sharp uh, edges as seams. It uses the select sharp operator that is already in Blender. Uh, for this scene, we'll have uh, three textures, one for the ground, uh, one for small objects, and one for bigger objects. All of them are gonna be 4K. So what I just did is I grouped them appropriately. Every material is a separate uh, texture set in substance. After that, I assigned different vertex colors to different elements. Vertex colors are going to be used in Substance to bake ID maps. And ID maps are going to be used to assign smart materials to 
different parts of objects. To do that, I'm using a custom operator that assigns uh, different vertex colors to selection. It cycles through different colors um, and when I was making it, I actually had to make sure that uh, different colors are actually uh, spaced um, properly. Because uh, the thing with uh, substance is when you drag colors uh, onto ID masks with uh, control, you know, it creates color selection with uh, 0.1 tolerance by default. And it's not customizable. At least I couldn't find a way to do so. And uh, as you can imagine, if colors are similar enough, the color selection will be applied to multiple colors at once. And uh, it's not what you usually would want. So ideally, it should have been zero by default. Because in a scene like this one, if I were to choose colors by hand, I would inevitably have colors that are similar. So I had to spend a whole stream the other day trying to make an algorithm that would get you colors that are spaced properly. Another consideration, of course, is that it's much faster to assign random colors than to choose colors manually. An alternative workflow to vertex colors IDs is to just separate different elements uh, into different objects. But that, in my opinion, just doesn't make sense in most cases. You can't have all of your separate ID groups in separate meshes. If you're making a character, for example, it doesn't make sense. You want your character mesh to be one object, so that you can animate it and stuff. So as I already mentioned, I had to cut out a lot of uh, parts uh, from this uh, Substance Painter part of the time-lapse. Because uh, I'm just really new to Substance and for the most part I didn't really know what I was doing. I was trying to use this uh, smart material that I made. It has uh, just some color and uh, a curvature layer to highlight edges. But as I quickly realized, it doesn't really work that well because different objects of different sizes need their own uh, curvature mask parameters. So I may consider making multiple uh, smart materials or maybe smart uh, masks that have different curvature masks uh, for different object sizes, you know? That may speed things up a little bit. Uh, another thing that I realized is that Materials by default have a roughness of about 0.3, if I remember correctly. And uh, for my style, I rarely need uh, glossy objects. So in my smart material that I'm usually using for my stuff, I should change roughness to about 0.9. I like putting gradients on large elements. If you put some color in it, it looks really good in my opinion. A uh, substance part of the work is uh, mostly like creative routine, if I may call it that. It's just a lot of decision making, you know? In this particular scene, it's basically interior decorating. And so there is not much to comment on here. You just tweak colors and try different things until it looks good. Uh, here I'm putting my own art in the frame for lack of better options. I went with the movie director, which is appropriate for this scene. There is a time lapse on this channel uh, where I'm making that. As you can see, there is a tomato on the director's seat in case the director has to provide some feedback in the shooting process. In this part, I'm adding some dirt to the walls. In hindsight, it was completely unnecessary because you can hardly see it in the final render. 
Same goes for the textures uh, on towels, for example. Adding some patches to the green screen, just to make it look more interesting. So yeah, like I said, a lot of routine. I'm not going to be talking all the time in uh, these uh, time lapses with commentary, just because videos are really long and I don't really have something to say at every single point in time, you know? But uh, the videos can also uh, get shorter when I get better at substance. For this scene I already uh, set up lighting. It happened off stream so it won't be in the time lapse. But honestly it's just a more creative routine. Just trying different things out, tweaking settings like uh, tweaking intensity of different light sources, their position and stuff like that, until you get the result that you like. Uh, my recommendation for lighting would be to use as many light sources as you like. They don't necessarily have to correspond to, you know, actual modeled uh, light sources. Most people won't even see that there is something wrong with it. You know, like in the movies, for example, there are sometimes rim lights that don't necessarily make sense if you think about it. But the point is that you don't usually think about it. It just looks good to you and that's all that you know. Here I'm just making some final tweaks. I'm trying to get as much contrast as I can without overexposing anything. Because I'm trying to get a nice flashy image that stands out. And we're pretty much done with it. If you liked this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you are not subscribed. And like I already mentioned in the beginning, I would be very glad to get any feedback on this particular format with the commentary. I'll make more of these if you like it. See you next time.